This is the final in our workshop series on Cell Oracle and today Kenji will be guiding us through the simulation part of the pipeline. Okay, over to you Kenji. Thank you. Now let me share my screen. Okay. Um, so today um, I'm going to talk about how to do simulation. I mean, the, we can do the simulation based on the gene layer trait network. So um, the, in the last session, we calculated the GRM based on the single cell RNA seq data. So today we will use the GRM structure to simulate the like, gene knockout or knock, um, overexpression or something. So, um, okay, let's, let's start that. So, um, first we need, sorry, we need to do first is to load the data, Oracle data. You know, this is um, made, this was made by the last analysis and uh, your single cell RNA expression data and I mean, almost everything, so uh, all data is stored in this object. So first, please load the Oracle data. And so here, one more thing you need to load is the GRM result. Um, please load the link file. So, um, you know, this file link link object include the GRM influence result. So today we gonna use this um, this information to um, for the simulation. And so first, um, you know, in the last session we did the GRM fitting, I mean GRM influence, but uh, here we will do the GRM influence again because you know the the next next session at the next next analysis this analysis uh, simulation will do the will use grn structure for the simulation but the the we need to do um, i mean we need we need to fit the grn again just because of the like technical um technical reason. So let me explain a bit. So this is the cell oracle paper. I mean if you are interested in how interested in the algorithm, please read our paper. But uh, please let me briefly explain what we are doing. So this is the really really simplified um, model. I mean we based on the regulatory gene expression we will we can predict the target gene expression i mean for example using the transcription factor gene expression level we will predict the target gene expression so we will use this model to predict the future gene expression pattern um, um so in the in the simulation we will simulate the signal propagation in the grm so we need to do we need to use this model uh, for example like this i mean for example if we knock out one gene we will predict the the future expression pattern in on the first target chain and then based on the first target chain so, so we apply this model again and I mean based on the first target gene expression change we will predict the second um, indirect target gene so I mean we will do such calculation repeat uh, multiple time so we need to do the preparation for that simulation okay so we are uh, the calculation finished so we are ready to go for the simulation okay so um here we are 
using the you know human policies single cell RNA seq data. So we are going to um, simulate GATA1 gene expression. Uh, I mean, we are going to do the GATA1 knockout simulation. Uh, this gene, GATA1, was known to play really, really important gene for the <coughs> uh, lineage uh, so differentiation from CMP state into the MEP state. I mean, GATA1 is master regulator for the lineage switching between the between these lineage. Okay, so we try to reproduce these, recapitulate these uh, um, phenotypes. Okay, um, so we are going to simulate GATA1 knockout here. But uh, before doing the simulation, we need to we need to check the actual gene expression level. So here is the gene expression of the GATA1 gene. The GATA1 gene is uh, highly expressed in the the erythrocyte lineage. I mean, this lineage. And weakly expressed in the you know the stem progenitor state. Um, okay, then we can visualize so we can visualize gene expression and uh, like uh, histogram. So maybe Angie, the expression on mm -hmm. on this step. Um, so Sarah and I were talking about this on Friday because she's been running the simulations and getting some you know, mm -hmm. interesting results on this. And we were discussing how do we best pick the value for mm -hmm. the, the overexpression. Uh, I mean, should you isolate it to a particular cluster and say, okay, what's the average expression within this cluster that I'm interested in? Um, should mm -hmm. you kind of, you know, pick the median uh, gene expression value? Um, mm -hmm. Or should you, I mean, what would happen if you go for a crazy amount of overexpression mm -hmm. and push that really far? Yeah, uh, really good question. So, um, for example, here the we can see GATA one expression is like, you know, like between zero and like one. I mean, if we use like, um, for example, if we set like one hundred or one thousand for the overexpression, and, and which is like crazy and different from natural value, maybe we will get like. Um, uh, you know, it's biologically um, um, non, I mean, maybe bad result, I guess. I mean, I, I don't know what happened if we set uh, like 1000 for like crazy value, but my recommendation is please don't do that. I mean, because we, we cannot expect at all. So, Maybe this kind of bad, so sorry, I don't know. I mean, uh, so one recommendation to pick up the overexpression value is look at this distribution, for example, and then read like uh, I will decide like um, um, for example, okay. Uh, so, so this is the you know the actual gene expression value. For example, one of the my um, favorite way is just just use the max value like this. Maybe this is gonna be you know just um, this is the max data one expression value, and maybe this is not. Uh, sorry, this is the biologically, you know, um, um, it's it's gonna be not crazy, you know. So I will I recommend to choose like max value, or yeah, I think you can do like uh, you, know, you can use the percentile. Uh, um, uh, like a 90 percentile, for example. Um, 
for example, um, I, I don't know which is the best for your analysis. I mean, it depends on your hypothesis or your biological system or, you know, but the mainly I recommend main, sorry, uh, my favorite option is using max value or like 90 percentile or 95 percentile or something like that. So, yeah. Um, sometimes you can set like just uh, two times max, for example. Maybe you can, no, it's gonna be not crazy. Maybe it's, yeah, it can be good, good option, I think. But please don't do like such such stuff. Maybe this gonna be like really crazy. I don't like that. It's tempting, okay. Kenji, just to see what will happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe you can try, but uh, yeah, I don't know what happened. Yeah. Okay. Um. So, uh. Yeah. I mean, in the in the knockout, it can be sometimes difficult question. What is the best value for the simulation? You know. But uh, in the knock knock out, it's really easy because we just set the expression to be zero. You know, we don't need to worry about it. So uh, here we will do the simulation using this function local dot simulate shift. So here we will, um, you know, the GOI is the data one. So we can do the simulation using this function. I mean, this means we will simulate data one expression to be zero. So if you want to um, do the over expression, please change like, I mean, like this or like this, I don't know. Your, you can set any, any value. And here we will do Got the one, got the one perturbation. I mean, single single perturbation, but it's also possible to do like double knockout or triple knockout or something. I mean, this is the dictionary, so you can set any value like this, got a two or uh, I don't know, C D N T A. So you can do something like that. So maybe you can do double or triple knockout or something. Um, in the cell oracle paper, we have test like just single knockout. I mean, we we haven't test double or triple knockout because there are um, you know the there are no um, ground truth data for the double or triple um, knockout. So I mean, we cannot. Cannot validate or evaluate the result, but in theory we can do double or triple knockout or any any, any number. But I don't recommend like one hundred knockout or something. I um, maybe I mean double knockout or triple knockout is maybe the yeah best choice. Or I don't know. Please don't do like one size some knockout or something. It can be like crazy. <laughs> okay. So Kenji, on that subject, I'm just thinking about ground truth data for double knockouts. Um, if we think about expressing, overexpressing multiple genes at the same time, we've got a reprogramming situation and we have ground truth data set for that because we have mouse embryonic fibroblasts where we overexpress FOXA1 and HNF4 alpha. Um, mm -hmm. So maybe we should try simulating that and seeing what the results yeah. are. Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. It sounds good. And for the knock, to, for the over expression, maybe we can, yeah, we can test double or triple over expression. So yeah, it sounds really good. Um, good suggestion. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so the it seems it looks the calculation finished. So we can go to the next step. The next step is the uh, um, visualization for, so, I mean, the next step, we will visualize cell transition, but anyway, please keep, please let me keep on going. I will go back to this step next, but 
anyway, please let me go next. So we will get the cell transition like this. Can you see that? Uh, okay. Oh, oops. Um, we can visualize like this. I mean, this is the tra transition, um, or I mean, this is a cell trajectory change. If we if we knock out get one, maybe we will get cell transition like this. So this is the MEP, the, the early cell site lineage, and this is the MEP lineage, and this is the GMP lineage. So I mean, this say this result saying if we knock out get one, maybe we will get the cell transition from MEP branch into GMP branch. So this result agree with the previous knowledge. I mean, that one is really important in this lineage, MEP lineage branch. So if we knock at that one, maybe cell will move to the, so we become more GMP-like state. I mean, this, like, so Oracle can um, uh, can reproduce the molecular switch of get one like this. Okay, so maybe this is uh, one of the unique point of so Oracle. I mean, we can we can know what happened if we knock out one transcription factor. So this will um, tell us the you know the mechanistic insight into the into your GRN. Um, you know in the net organ analysis we can pick up some gene like this but we in the net organ analysis we can just say maybe this is important and you know we don't in the net organ analysis we don't know how important or how is what is the function you know but if we do the simulation we can assume the, 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 you know, the, how it works or how the transcription factor relate to the lineage or cell, cell identity decision or something. Okay, so let me go back this, um, this function. So, so here, I mean, uh, first, we need to calculate the the we need to do so. This is the first step of the simulation. We will simulate the future gene expression if we knock out get one here. Uh, so this function with this function, we can get we can calculate we can simulate the future gene expression pattern after the perturbation. And next, we will calculate the transition probability. I mean, so, and then we can calculate the embedding shift and we can calculate the bit or load. I mean, we can calculate such stuff. So here, uh, here, we are using the function of the the you know this one bear site, which is the the Python library for the RNA um, RNA BRST analysis. So for the visualization, I'm using the same module. So if you are interested in these functions. You can go to the web documentation or the bill site. There are so many information. So, and I highly recommend you to read the paper of this work. I mean, please read the RNA biology paper first, so so that you can understand uh, what you're doing here. The, in brief, you, you, we are calculating the similarity of the cell um, 
between the simulated value and existing value, and we can visualize your cell trajectory here. Okay, so maybe this is the one of the you know really important um, step. So, but uh, we also have uh, some additional function. For example, um, you know, in this step, we uh, we have calculated the transition probability. I mean, this means, you know, if you if you knock out some gene, maybe cell identity will change a little bit, and then you will get the transition probability. So, based on the transition probability, you can do the Markov simulation I mean like, like this so for example if you focus on these cells maybe these cells going to become I mean will change like this I mean this cell is going to be changed like this or like this so I mean we can do this simulation it's it's like a random walk, but it's not completely random. It's it's Markov simulation is so. I mean, with this simulation, we can know the cell um, so transition. So, for example, we can visualize like cell transition in the quantitative manner. I mean. Maybe MEP cells going to be GMP cells like this, and uh, like many many astrocyte cells going to be GMP cell, GMP lineage or like this. So, and you know, um, you can visualize. I mean, you can quantitatively visualize your um, future transition pattern with this function. And um, you know we have many many cell cluster, and it looks like you know it looks a little bit overwhelming. So if we if you have if you have another um, cell cluster information, you can you know you can change visualization. I I did the grouping, and then <clears throat> we can visualize it like this. So if we knock out that one, maybe many um, MEP cells going to be GMP cells. Yeah, this makes sense. Um, many, some of the, you know, this so course are going to be this course or something. So, you know, <clears throat> the, we can visualize cell trajectory like this, or in the Sankey diagram like this. But, but basically, the, this is the same analysis. So, <clears throat> so this is a simulation part. I mean, you, um, using the GRM structure, we can simulate future gene expression pattern. And then, using this future gene expression pattern, we can predict so, so transition or so trajectory transition. Like this, and we can visualize in multiple way. For example, in the Sankey diagram, like this. Yeah, and this is really useful to know your the function of your gene of interest. Yeah, and um, that's it. Any question? Thanks, Kenji. Yep. Um, yes. So I had a question about the number of simulation steps. And again, mm -hmm. this is something that Sarah and I were talking about on Friday. Um, mm -hmm. You know, because when you run these simulations, you're looking on a relatively short time scale. Um, mm -hmm. But the you know the phenotype that Sarah's considering is, and feel free to chip in here with what you were thinking. Um, you know, that's on the range of days to a week. 
So we were wondering again how far we can push that, how extreme we can be. Um, yes. So um, can I share my screen again? Um, yeah. So yeah. So in here. So usually we recommend doing. So this is the number of the so number of the calculation. Mm -hmm. So number of propagation signal signaling propagation inside the GRN. So we usually use the three for the propagation because if we do many many time propagation, maybe you will get noise or you know art artifact and um, which is um, not good. And here after doing the you know uh, like straight time perturbation, I mean we will get the future gene expression problem, but really, really short time, um, short range, and really um, near near future. So, but you know, in this in this in this step in the um, in the visualization step, we will calculate the cell similarity between the simulated cell and original original cell. Um, if the even if your calculation is really limited range, I mean, really n equals three, but you still get your um, you know your direction of your transition you know, here, and you can you can connect transition like here and from here and from here and you know, the everything if you know if the trajectory is connected, we can. We can you know we can know the global transition pattern. So I mean, even if your simulation is limited, the simulation time is limited, you still get the long. Um, you still you can still analyze the long term um, transition if you use this. Um, this you know this this function I and mean, this is why we uh this is why i'm using this the uh, so parasite function basically our simulation is really limited i mean the number of, number of signaling propagation is really small and i don't think we should extend this time because we will get really noisy data but it's still okay because the we can extend this you know, our our analysis using this function the each each transition is really really limited but we can connect each other and we can follow the global trend so this is why i'm using this one. so i mean if you're if your I mean, biological event is you know two weeks or like really long range, I think you, you still. Um, my recommendation is still using really small number for the simulation. Um, but but <laughs> one one advice: uh, um, if your your single cell data set contain really you know. Um, if your single cell analytic data set doesn't contain like the whole information, I mean, if you want to analyze two weeks trajectory, your single cell analytic data set should contain two weeks, like data set for the two weeks. Um, please make sure that. So, I mean, in in conclusion, my recommendation is still using small number, like three or four or five. Please don't do like 100 or something. It can't be, you know, I don't know what happened. Maybe, I don't know. But. Kenji, that's an important point you raised there as well, that yeah, you cannot predict 
transition to a cell type that is not contained within your data set that you haven't yeah. profiled. Exactly. Yeah, this is the limitation of the cell oracle. I mean, in the cell oracle, we will uh, compare future gene expression for them. So we would we answer. We would plot the future gene expression pattern onto your your um, single cell RNA seq map. So if your RNA seq data set doesn't contain, you know, the the some cell some cell cluster, you cannot predict um, predict the change to to become such cells. I mean, if you, um, your single cell RNA seq data set is really really important, um, please make sure that your and if you want to analyze like so for example, if you want to analyze cell development, please make sure your single cell RNA seq data include such um, cell type in the development. Yeah, this is maybe a really big um, limitation, but I think which you know um, which is not uh, which is the general general orientation for the RNA seq or we cannot know if your data doesn't include the cell type. I mean, our our algorithm using the our algorithm is using the machine learning algorithm. So if your data doesn't contain some information, we cannot predict that information. Okay. Um, I have a question. Uh, kind of similar but different. Um, so we talked about staying within sort of the range or maybe twice the range of gene expression levels uh, mm -hmm. in perturbations. And we also talked about uh, multiple gene perturbations. Is the range mm -hmm. narrowed or the scope narrowed at all when you're perturbing multiple genes at a time? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I don't have a good answer for your question. I mean, um, I mean, I have a test multiple gene knockout for you know, but now maybe you can you can just do this you can do the multiple knockout in exact same same manner as single single knockout. I mean, you can try like um, I mean, you if you're interested in the multiple or sort of double or triple overexpression, you can set any value for each overexpression. I mean, if you, um, maybe you, um, for example, if you want to try, okay, so let me share again. Um, here, uh, on the single cell, sorry, single, um, uh, if you try like uh, data one over expression, you can use this value. You know, this this is a twice at x value. And if you also want to try like, uh, for example, data one at uh, 1.86. And if you want to do that, uh, to point eight, um, so you can try like this. I mean, um, yeah, I. Don't know which. Um, sorry, I maybe you can try it like this. And if you have some problem, please reduce the value or change the value or something. So, yeah, this is my recommendation. 
be helpful if we can find some data sets, some single cell data sets where there's double knockouts. Um, you know, our own, we have a you know overexpression of two genes together. Um, so that could be a fun experiment to try. I had a question, Kenji. Mm -hmm. Um, so for the transitions which you simulate, does the tool also give us a confidence score for each transition? Uh, no, uh, we so um, yeah. So here, for example, uh, sorry. Uh, so let me share my screen again. Mm. So the in the first in this step, you know, we are using the function of the bell side, um, which which doesn't give us any like p value or something. We we all we get is like like this. We will get the transition score, but the mm, so we cannot get the p value or confidence range or something so um so if you um, if your phenotype is really small maybe your um, your trajectory will be shown like this and the you know this in, that's where in the in the mep lineage there are there are so many so the big difference so you will get like you know the um, clear, clear phenotype here. But if your transition is really minor, maybe you will get like this. Your transition will show like this. So you can get the, you know, you will see um, you can interpret the result like this, but Basically, we we don't get any p value or mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. The reason I was wondering, uh, the reason I think that might be useful is if you have a cell which goes into a phenotype which is not in your data set, maybe that'll have that be forced to an existing cell type, but then that might have like a smaller confidence score or something, and you could use that to filter those out or like at least identify those. But I guess if that's a limitation of the our new velocity tool which you're using so it might be hard to implement that yeah, yeah i like okay. that idea kunal um because then you know you you've got some indication that you need to profile your cell population more widely mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or you could run those cells through like a classification algorithm and see if you get something else yeah mm -hmm. yeah um, yeah, in the future we can try such um, analysis. Yeah, it's really good solution. Cool. Thanks. Yep. Um, uh, and so, uh, in the just just one thing, please let me add. Uh, so uh, this is our minus weight. So um, if we now got, for example, here yeah, if we do the got one knockout, we will, you know, we will get the transition probability score. Maybe we can use this score for the analysis. Maybe if we focus on this this cells, the red red cells, the this the the cell are going to become like the dark dark blue cells and the color indicate each transition probability. I mean these cells uh, this transition probability sh is showing the how how the cell is going to become and if you compare this score, maybe you can know, you know, this if, if this change is more like robust change or just random change or something. Maybe this is one of the options. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
You can visualize this transition property. Okay. Um, okay, so the um, anything else? I mean, I I want to for for the um, I want to I, I also want to talk about the the some some limitation and some you know some some point about the cell oracle for the last um, presentation. Mm. Uh, Kenji, mm -hmm. I had a quick question or maybe, yes. yeah, I don't know, about um, visualization, I guess. Um, mm -hmm. I, you show the, the Sankey diagrams a lot and I like those, but I was curious if maybe it was an option already or something that you might like to try out is could those be turned into like circos plots instead of the mm. diagrams and i was just wondering if that might i don't know if that might be help you know be a little yeah. more intuitive or informative mm -hmm. or it's an option already yeah yeah i i haven't tried yet but yeah i yeah, I really agree with that. And maybe the circle, circle, I, I don't know how to call the, the circle sankey or something is yeah. really cool, cool and maybe more, you know, yeah, I would try. It's. I was just, whenever I was looking at some of, you know, the sankey diagrams, you, you still see, you know, it still visual shows, you know, um one cluster and it goes straight to its same identity mm -hmm. yep. on the other side mm -hmm. so i just wondered if maybe a circos plot or something would maybe clean that up a little bit so you're really only seeing the mm -hmm. cells that are actually changing identities and just if that might help you know the visualization a little bit or not i don't know i was just Kind of an idea, or you know, wondering if you had tried it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm interested in such broad. Yeah, it's really good idea. I will try definitely. Maybe in the in the next next version of Cerato, I will add such function. Yeah. Okay. So let me um, let me talk one more stuff for the uh, okay. So there are several um, several stuff I want to talk. Um, and this these are the limitation or or cautions. So please don't do these things or please keep in mind this stuff. So first, so Oracle was designed to analyze the transcriptional general electron network. And if your <clears throat> if your system or if your biological event is uh, is you know mainly regulated by the post transcriptional regulation or protein protein injection. Maybe you know it might be difficult to analyze such stuff. I mean, this is a general um, limitation for the single cell RNA synthesis. I mean, uh, for example, like um, you know, if you're <clears throat> maybe cell oracle is really useful for the analysis of developmental biology or differentiation or reprogramming or something. But like, if you are interested in like um, neuron activity, you know, which is really happening in, in the short time, maybe you can uh, do several cool um, such. Yeah. So please, in, please keep in mind that there is the software for the transcriptional gene regulatory network. 
And second, the therapy used some Python libraries. And I recommend to learn how to use Scampy and Verisite. These two software, Scampy and Verisite, is really important for the software analysis. And please check its software if you have some no, if you have some question. Um, and next for the simulation, I highly recommend to simulate the transcription factor that have many connections. I mean, the our simulation depends on the GRN structure. And if a uh, transcription factor don't have any connection or any theory, or if a transcription transcription factor have very small number of connection, it's impossible to, to calculate the signal propagation and it's impossible to use this PL for the simulation. So, I mean, my recommendation is to pick up transcription factor based on your network analysis. I mean, please pick up important transcription factor first and then use this use that transcription factor for the simulation. So, um, and the next thing is that please be careful if you're going to analyze your signal cellular analytic data that was generated by the data integration algorithm. So I will explain why I will explain this point. Um, for example, if please let please let us assume that you know we have uh, we are going to analyze this um, um, such such um, such GRN. If one transcription factor trans TF one have the negative regulatory power on the target gene, you know maybe we will get like this. If the TF1 increase, maybe the target gene expression will decrease. No. And then if we make some linear model with Sirocco, maybe we might get the negative, negative slope. So the I mean Sirocco result can you know, successfully detect the, this relationship, which is you know, how Sirocco works. And please let me think if we have two, two experimental data, batch one and batch two, basically the, these cells, cell type is you know, the same cell type and you know, we will get really reproducible result. But uh, in the batch two, the UMI scale is a little bit different from batch one, for example. It can happen if the second step, second steps, may you know sometimes you will get different second steps or you know different dropout ratio or something. And the worst case scenario is you know if you have mixed these cell types, and you know we have totally different second steps, so Oracle will make mathematical model like this, you know. Even the even the regulatory two two regulatory um, mechanism is negative regulation. If there are there is kind of batch effect, we will get totally different result. This is a you know this is a nightmare. This is the worst case scenario for the cell okay. So I mean, I won't I won't um, say please make sure that you're, I mean, please be careful about the budget effect. So Kenji, if, just so uh, I'm clear on this point, um, mm -hmm. if you, so across batches, uh, target gene uh, TF relationships will be retained. Um, and what you're saying here is it would be better to analyze these data sets batch by batch rather mm -hmm. than combining batches together. Yes. Yes. Um, okay. Yep. 
Um, I mean, <clears throat> so if you're, for example, if you use some kind of batch um, data integration algorithm, and um, if the batch effect correlation works perfect, maybe it's fine. No, but uh, if you are not sure about the you know batch effect, my recommendation is to do the analysis and you know individually. Mm -hmm. Please make GRN for the batch one and make GRN for the batch two, and then compare. You will get, and hopefully, you will get the really similar result. Okay. So, um, if you have like multiple, uh, so if you have a data which was generated by the integration, my recommendation is to run Soraku individually and then, you know think about the result after that or please make sure that your batch effect um inter your integration algorithm is working really well otherwise you will get really you know wrong um uh, your end score so one possibility kenji could be to yeah. Uh, run cell oracle for each batch and then could you integrate the network configurations together for the entire data set i think that's something we haven't explored yet mm, yeah maybe i think we can do that for example we can like average in the network score i mean for example if you get like so score like here we, if we get like 0 0.4 and here 0 0.6 maybe we can Take average. Um, I mean, we can integrate the GRN like this. But, uh, yeah, maybe we can try. Um, the you no, know, the current version of so Oracle does not have any function for the network um, merging network. But in the future, we can try. So and I wanna say. Uh, here is please be careful if you use the MSL analytic data um, integration. I, I think this is not only for the so Oracle, but also for all of the MSL analytic analysis. I mean, if you margin some data, you need to be careful about the batch effect. Okay. Yep, that's it. So, if uh, any questions? Okay, maybe fine. Um, Thanks again. This is something Sarah and I were talking about um, with her she has her integration of her CHAM and, um, and uh, surgical samples mm -hmm. and that we were talking about you know, do we run this on each on each batch separately or do we look at the integrated data set look at the clusters there and then go back to the raw data to run cell oracle but then we can you know it might be better to separate this by batch because potentially by looking at, because I think you've got five different batches in that data set. Yeah, and so we could potentially be kind of masking some interesting results there. Okay, thank you for listening. Thanks for this, Kenji. It's been really helpful.